Now it's time to try the new tool on a photograph. Here are the seven images I used inside Lightroom experimenting with its watermark feature there. I have exported them from Lightroom so that their longest edge is precisely 555 pixels, horizontal or vertical. I find that this size nicely fits the browser window on a 15-inch laptop, allowing for just a little breathing space around the photographs while still providing viewers with a much larger screen, an image that they can examine closely and appreciate. But let's do two things at once. Watermark stamp our first image while at the same time building an action will save for doing more photos inside Photoshop again. Let's open the first image we want to stamp with our new watermark. Now open the Actions panel by going up to the Windows menu and dropping down to select it there. It is likely that if you have never used Actions in your workflow before that there will only be one folder visible, Photoshop's Default Actions series. I'm going to have you create a new folder to start building your own set to use from here on out. Process shortcuts that are important to how you work with this application. Note that at the bottom of the Actions panel there's a little folder icon. Click on it. A dialog will open asking you to name your new folder. I called my custom action series My Set. Pretty creative, eh? Next, adjacent to the folder icon in the Actions panel well is a little square that looks like a paper page with its lower left corner folded up. Click on this New Action icon and in the dialog that opens titled The New Action You Will Build as ID Stamp. Note that any time in the future, if you wish to rename either your folder names here or the names of your actions, simply double click on the title you wish to change and have at it. Click on the little circle in the panel well to begin recording the new ID stamp action. Understand that Photoshop will record each and everything you do from this point until you stop recording by clicking on the little square to the left of the circle here, so be thoughtful on what you do while recording. In the future, you might want to write down the series of steps you intend to follow when building one of these shortcuts or actions. While you're certainly able to edit an action later, this habit of making a series of handwritten notes in advance will encourage you to think about how to order a work process you will save in a more sensible fashion. Be focused and deliberate in how you proceed. Your first move is to press the D key. This makes certain that your swatches are reset to their default, black as the foreground color, white as the background color. Doesn't matter if your swatches are already set to their default. Sometime in the future, when you've been working like crazy on one file after another, your swatch set may be out of sync with what we will be doing here. So that each time you stamp an image with the ID or watermark you built as a brush here in Photoshop, the process will be exactly the same, no confusion afterward or need to fix an unwanted effect. Next, press the X key, and Photoshop will reverse the order of your swatches. White will now be your foreground color, and black your background color. Now refocus your attention to the Layers panel. If it is not currently open, once again drop down from the Windows menu to select and open it. In the Well of the Layers panel, you will find again the already familiar square with upturned corner icon. Click on this to create a new blank layer above your background layer, the image we are working on. Double click inside the Layer 1 title and rename it Copyright, or you can simply use one of the keyboard shortcuts I gave you earlier to type in the copyright symbol instead. Pause for a moment and look over to the Actions panel. See how Photoshop is recording the process we are building? This record is helpful not only to remind you of what has been built into the action later, but it also gives you hints of places you can affect later to amend the action if need be. Now we will select the brush tool inside the tool panel or by simply pressing the B key. Navigate to the options bar above and make sure that both the opacity and flow settings are at 100%. Then move to the brush preset picker and click on the downward facing arrow there. Look for your new ID stamp brush which should be down at the bottom of the list of current brushes you have loaded. Note that because I had named my brush by including the font I used in building it, I have no trouble choosing the intended brush straight away. With the brush selected, press the return key to collapse the brush preset picker and move your cursor now replaced by the outline of your selected brush for stamping your watermark over the photograph. It is likely that the watermark is too large for the image you are currently working on. So if you want to adjust the brush size, just go to the right and left bracket keys on your keyboard and press the left bracket key to make the brush a bit smaller, 
the right bracket key to make it larger again. Now we're going to insert a pause to our action. Move up to the little arrow and list icon at the top corner of the actions panel. Click and drop down to insert stop. A window opens and inside the message window type select different ID brush. This will remind you to make a decision when the window pops open. You will see why this is important when we play back the action later. Don't forget to check the allow to continue box before hitting the OK button to move on with the process we are recording. Before committing to the placement of your watermark, look closely at your photo. Find an area that both provides a bit of darkness by way of shadow detail or intensity of color, as well as being a spot in your image that has a level of detail that would make the process of cloning out or somehow erasing the watermark more difficult than it is worth the time and effort required for someone to use your image as their own. This may take a bit of practice, but keep in mind, because we are placing this watermark on its own layer, we can easily move it around and affect its transparency, even add or subtract sharpening to our heart's content if we turn the watermark layer into a smart object later on. When you're satisfied with your placement, click your mouse cursor once to stamp your image. Now we're going to convert the watermark into a smart object. This will allow us to add more or less sharpening to our ID stamp later, which may be helpful in some cases. With the copyright layer still active, move up to the arrow and list at the top right corner of the layers panel and click to select the option turning our watermark into a smart object. Then up to the top again to the filter menu and drop down to smart sharpen. The settings you see here are a pretty good starting point for what you need to accomplish. Remember because this layer has been converted to a smart object, you can go back again and re-effect the sharpening equation at any time in the future. I also like to add a drop shadow to my ID stamp. If you are working with a full version of Photoshop instead of Photoshop Elements, you will soon see why and how the drop shadow is a great addition to the end effect we are able to craft with this method of watermarking images. Once again, drop down to the well of the Layers panel and click on the FX icon to select Drop Shadow as a layer style. When the layer style window opens, you will be presented with a series of settings options there you are able to dial in for its effect. I've settled upon those you see here. Click OK and then press the V key to activate the Move tool. Return to the Actions panel and click on the tiny square to the left of the red Record Circle icon to stop recording your action. You're done. Because you last selected the Move tool, you can now immediately begin to reposition your watermark if you would like. If you're working with one of the Photoshop CS versions, move up to the Fill Adjustment in the Layers panel. However, if you're working with Photoshop Elements, you do not have the ability to affect the layer's fill opacity, only a layer's overall or global opacity. Float your cursor over the term Fill and the arrow turns into the now familiar scrubby slider interface reminding you of that convenience for making adjustments here. Click and drag to the left while paying close attention to how the opacity of the white colored watermark begins to fade, exposing more and more of the underlying image, though the drop shadow is left unaffected. The fill settings modify the opacity of the layer's content, while leaving untouched whatever layer style has been assigned to it. So depending upon the ID stamp we have designed and the layer styles we employ, one can potentially create an effect that reduces the watermark's opacity to zero, a virtual window through to the image. A simple large copyright symbol in this case could be set to a sort of solar corona effect, for example. So in Photoshop CS, I first affect the fill opacity level, then I move up to the opacity setting and pull back to the point where the watermark nearly disappears. Please understand, in my opinion, a watermark is in place only to prevent someone from using my images without permission, without some form of usage compensation. An overly obvious watermark simply ruins an image. It makes the full appreciation of an image when it's presenting to their viewers that connection we're striving to make with a potential client, customer, or admirer a near impossibility to achieve. If someone notices your watermark first and the image you are presenting is an incidental aside, then you've wasted your time publishing it like this, plain and simple. To me, a watermark is like a little picket fence that borders your home's property. You can choose to see the fence for what it is, a marker or symbol of ownership, or you can choose to see through it, 
Look past the sign and enjoy what is beyond the fence. Your garden, your property is more expansive. The fence keeps the dogs out, but at the same time it's only decoration. Affecting each watermark individually on all the images you are preparing for digital sharing by utilizing a brush stamp here in Photoshop, you have the ability to place that watermark in the optimum spot in each image you stamp. This is another important advantage to the process I'm showing you here and is the principal difference with Lightroom's watermark feature. If you'll recall early on I told you that when you set up a watermark in Lightroom, that effect is anchored in place modifying each and every image exactly the same. By utilizing this Photoshop stamping process instead, you are able to readjust for each image you watermark and in the process build a more sophisticated presentation of your work. But, you say, I've got 50 images I'm working on building a gallery. Time is money. In the next, much shorter screencast, I will show you how to easily automate this process and move through however many images you intend to watermark in almost no time at all. Now that we have our ID stamp action in place, let's take it out for a spin on another image in our folder. Press the play button in the well of the actions panel. Okay, remember the stop command we built into the action as we were recording? Here's our reminder. Now if we have a number of additional watermark brushes available, we can consider one of them instead of the brush we baked into our action originally. How about that large copyright symbol sporting a solar corona effect as an alternative? Here's the brush I created earlier. I select it, hit the return key to get rid of my brush picker, stamp the image, and then hit the play button again to finish out the recorded action. Yeah, you say, but where's that corona effect? I double click on the term effects here in the copyright layer and in the layer style dialog that opens I uncheck the drop shadow we baked into our action then click on outer glow. This both activates the outer glow layer style and opens a related panel with options available to edit that effect. Adjust them as you see fit and press OK to commit the new outer glow to your watermark. Voila! Now to see the difference this Photoshop ID stamp brush method makes compared to utilizing Lightroom's watermark feature for a web gallery or slideshow, go to this URL for that example. And look to the information below the video here for a link to a PDF that will break down this process step by step. See you next time.